Hey everyone, thanks for watching again, and for those of you who have been following for a bit, I do apologize for the delay since my last video. The last couple weeks have been kind of crazy. Anyways, in this video, I'll teach you everything you need to know about protecting your Microsoft Excel workbooks, or as I like to call it, dummy proofing them. I'll start with the most basic forms of protecting your workbooks and worksheets and then get more advanced and secure as we go. We'll touch on hiding rows, columns, and sheets. We'll then touch on protecting the structure of a workbook so all the work you put into making it look pretty will be safe. Then we'll cover using drop down menus to protect the integrity of your data. And after that, we'll cover protecting a sheet so no edits can be made at all. And finally, we'll cover protecting a sheet and only allowing some cells to be edited by others. We have a ton to cover, so let's dig in. The first thing I'll touch on is hiding rows, columns, and sheets so that you can keep things like formulas, data tables, and other things out of sight from other users. To start, let's look at how we can hide rows and columns. In this example, I'm looking at a case management team. I've set a goal for them each day to try and get more cases done today than they did yesterday. In column D, I divide the total number of cases worked today by the total number of cases yesterday. When I'm looking at Andy, I want to be able to say that he worked 4% less cases today than he did yesterday, not that he worked 96% of how many cases he worked yesterday. Hopefully that makes sense. So I just set up another equation in column E based on what's in column D. There really isn't a need to show column D to the agents, and in fact, it's just one more way for the formulas to get messed up by any other person. So I'm going to hide that column. I'll do that by selecting all of column D and then right clicking and selecting hide. To unhide the column, I can highlight the columns before and after the hidden column and then select unhide. You can accomplish the same thing by hiding a sheet. Let's say this is the data page where you keep all your agent's metrics. But on this page over here, you have a report built to only pull the information for one agent at a time based on who you select in the dropdown. That means there's no reason to keep this data sheet open and vulnerable for your formulas being messed with. You can hide that sheet by right clicking on it and selecting hide. You can unhide it by right clicking on any open sheet and then clicking on unhide and selecting the sheet you want to unhide and clicking OK. But now you might be thinking, you aren't even really teaching me how to protect my worksheet or workbooks because what's stopping other people from just unhiding all the sheets? Well, that's what I'm going to show you next. You can protect the structure of your workbook so that other people can't hide or unhide your sheets. You can do that by clicking on the review tab and then clicking protect workbook and then OK. Now when you try to hide a sheet, it won't allow you to do it. It also won't allow you to unhide it if you already had it hidden. To turn off that feature, click Protect Workbook again. You can also protect the workbook with a password to prevent others from unprotecting the workbook. Just ensure that you remember what your password is if you ever want to make changes again. It is important to recognize that by protecting the workbook, it only keeps the structure of the workbook safe. It won't protect others from editing cells or formulas, or hiding or unhiding rows and columns. Luckily, there is a way to lock cells, rows, and columns to prevent others from typing over your formulas. There are a few ways of doing this, actually. You can protect the entire sheet within a workbook so that a user cannot type or change any of the cells. You can protect the entire sheet, but allow users to make changes on the cells you pick, or you can use drop-down lists to only give users one choice from a set of criteria that you pick, which can be useful in cases of data collection, or protecting the integrity of your data. I'll go over each real quick. First, let's touch on protecting an entire sheet within a workbook so that no changes can be made at all. That's really simple. Just select the sheet that you want to protect, and then from the Review tab again, you're going to protect the sheet this time. You can choose to set a password here if you'd like. By placing a password, it only allows those who have the password to unprotect the sheet. Just remember the password or you won't be able to make changes either. In this pop-up, you can also decide what you are going to allow other users to do when the sheet is protected. The default is that you only allow them to click to and from other cells, but not change them. But you can allow things like inserting a new row or column, or you can allow them to add hyperlinks or use the sort feature. I'm going to keep it as default and then click OK. You can see that when I try to make changes, I get an error message. I'm going to unprotect the sheet by clicking on Unprotect Sheet. I want to show you something really useful. In column F, I'm going to add a complete row. When an agent has seen their score for the day, I want them to write complete in column F. And over in column J, I want Excel to count how many completes there are. If you want to do that, I'd highly recommend watching my video on count if and count ifs. I'll put a link at the top of this video. You can see that if Andy writes complete, it'll count one in J2. But watch what happens when Jim misspells complete. J2 only counts one complete because it's misspelled. I want to avoid that. I'm going to do that by creating a drop down and then protecting this sheet. I do that by selecting F2 through F5 and then from the data tab, 
selecting data validation. From the allowed list, I'm going to choose list. In the source box, I'm going to type complete and ensure it's spelled correctly. Now I'm going to click OK. I'm also going to take one more step. With F2 and F5 still selected, I'm going to click on Allow Edit Ranges. Now I'm going to click on New. In this pop-up, you should see that F2 through F5 are already selected. You can add a password here if you'd like. I'm not going to. And then hit OK and Apply. Now column F has a drop-down where folks can select Complete when they are done seeing their score. I'm going to protect the sheet now. Watch what happens when Jim tries to type Complete and misspells it. He gets an error but it will allow him to select from the dropdown. Now let's say that we want to add a comment section in column G that allows the agents to make comments about their productivity for that day. We want to keep the rest of the sheet protected so that they can't type in any of the other cells. But again, we want them to be able to use the dropdown in column F, and we want them to have a free form space here to write whatever they want. We need to figure out how to unlock only specific cells in this sheet. It's simpler than you might think. I'm going to unprotect the sheet for the time being so that I can make a few changes. I'm going to select the cells that I want agents to be able to type free in when I protect the sheet. That's all of column G. Now I'm going to right click and select format cells. From here, I'm going to click on protection. Right now, because this checkbox says locked is checked, these cells are going to be locked from editing when I protect the sheet again. So I'm going to uncheck that box and click OK. Then I'm going to protect the sheet. Now, as you can see, when I try to type in the other boxes, I get an error message. But when I type in the comment section, it allows me to. There are two more things that I want to show you about protecting your workbook, so stay with me. But before I do that, I do want to take about nine seconds to give you a heads up on a couple of things. If you are enjoying this video, or if at the end of the video you decide you've learned something, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Doing so will give you an update anytime I post a new video. Also, I'd really appreciate it if you'd let me know you liked the video by giving me a thumbs up and sharing it. Also, in the comment section, let me know how you found my channel. Alright, let's finish this video off with two cool ways of protecting your work in Excel. Many of you are working with Teams sites or OneDrive and are sharing your spreadsheets with other individuals. One way to share a workbook with other users but only allow them to view it and not make changes to it is by making it read only. You can do that by clicking on File and then Protect Workbook under Info. From there, you can change it to Read Only. Now, when other people open your workbook, it basically falls under the look but don't touch category, but without the temptations. You can also remove the read only status by clicking it again. Another thing that you can do is encrypt the workbook with a password. This means that the only people who would even be able to open the workbook are those who have the password. You can do that basically the same way as you would making it read only. I'll click file and then protect workbook from the info tab. From there, I'll click encrypt with a password. Now this is important. Ensure that you remember your password, or you'll have lost all your work and will have to start from scratch. So always remember your password. Now when I open the workbook, you can see that it won't even allow me to open it until I enter the password. Well, that about covers it for protecting your work, or as I like to call it again, dummy proofing your work. Thanks for watching. I'd love to hear about how you found my channel. Please leave me a comment below. Speaking of my channel, don't be afraid to check out some of my other videos. Until next time. Hey guys, how you doing? If you learned something from this video, you're going to want to do a couple things. First, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. If you do that, you're going to be the first one to get notified when I post a new video, which is about once a week. I'd also ask that you hit that like button and the share button, and then tell me what you learned in the comment section. If you do all of those things, this video is actually going to get out there for more people to see and to learn from. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.